today we're going to talk about my first whiskey haul of 2024. Uh, I got some pretty good bottles, so you want to stay tuned. Welcome back to the Bourbon Retriever, why go out in the wild, hunt bourbon, and today I bring it back for you. Now the first bottle I'm talking about today is a brand new bottle and a brand new company. This is the Blind Preacher, and it's coming from a small uh, town uh, near Charlottesville, Virginia. The distillery is Virginia Foothills Distillery, and they have two products out now. They have the single barrel and a small batch. When I went to the distillery, I was on a bachelor trip and just happened to actually stumble across it. I'd never heard of it before. And I was like, wait, there's a distillery like right across the street. So I went and checked it out and I talked to the master distiller and they actually opened the, the tasting room like a week before I showed up. But it was a gorgeous tasting room. They had some nice couches to sit at, a nice beautiful countertop. And the pours were relatively cheap. They had both the small batch and the single barrel for $4 a pour, which is just fantastic. I'll be opening this bottle and giving my notes on it on my first live stream tonight at 8 p.m. Uh, you're going to want to tune in because I'm also giving away a one-ounce sample of an old Rip Van Winkle number 10 to a lucky person watching the stream. I left a link to the stream down in the description below. Go click it, hit the notification bell, that way you don't miss when I go live. But I'm super excited I found this bottle. Always trying to support local, trying to get local distilleries here in Virginia, grow, get bigger. Um, and trying to find that next brand. And I'm just excited for what the future holds for this distillery. And the next bottle is a Sagamore eight year. This bottle um, I got for the blind last year uh, for my top rise of the year. This came out in 2023, this is batch two. Sagamore is well loved in this area, in the DC Baltimore area. It is the biggest distillery in the area. So it has a massive following. And that is for good reason. The ryes they put out are some of the best ryes on the market, especially for the price point. I don't know how it's going to change with their new ownership structure. I really hope they keep it at reasonable prices, but they just make some quintessential rye and some of their finishing products are really cool and unique. Okay, next on this list is a John J. Bowman single barrel store pick. Now the store picks can be hard to find. John J. Bowman itself outside of Virginia can be very hard to find. Uh, a couple months ago, um, several stores in the area were getting these picks. They weren't actually picked by the stores that had the sticker on them. But long story short, um, the single barrel picks were reallocated to several stores in the Baltimore area. And the store was lucky enough to grab one. Now this is the first John Jay Bowen pick I have. But I would say this is very similar to a traditional John Jay. Um, I'm pretty sure you put this next to another John J. Bowman. I probably wouldn't be able to tell them too much apart. But regardless, it's a really good bottle. And if you have not had John J. Bowman single barrel yet, uh, try and get one. They are definitely worth the $50. Okay, next on this list is going to be two bottles. And it is going to be two Buffalo Trace single barrel picks. Both these came in at around $32, which is traditionally about the price for a Buffalo Trace store pick. These normally charge around $25, $28 uh, just for the normal bottles and a store pick you normally charge is $5 more. So that puts these right in line with that pricing. So I don't know how Buffalo Trace picks are handled across the country, but here in uh, the Maryland neck of the woods, almost all the stores, only maybe one or two actually go and pick the picks, the vast majority of them. Um, the store just picks them and ships them up to the store and then the store sells them. And that is because for several reasons. Uh, one, if the store actually went and did the pick, uh, they actually wouldn't get it until the following year. And stores don't want to wait on those sales because they could, in theory, maybe fall out of allocation for Buffalo Trace. Uh, in addition, when a store sells a barrel of a store pick, that goes to their allocation. So if the store delayed their allocation from a year, that would put them in a not great position to keep their position on the Sazerac list and might cost them not to get B-Tax or other bottles. So a lot of stores in the area aren't going and doing the picks themselves um, just out of fear of losing their spot on the tier list. But regardless, Buffalo Trace just doesn't put out bad picks. If it's picked by the store or a distiller, it's gonna be good. I've never had a bad one. In fact, this one here that uh, was designated to S&W is probably the best Buffalo Trace pick I've ever had. This is so oaky. 
Um, you could almost convince me that it's not a Buffalo Trace product and that it's probably maybe something else in the Buffalo Trace line. It just tastes drastic older than a normal Buffalo Trace. Okay, next on this list is a Four Roses tasting set. So I'm pretty sure these are in Kentucky only. Uh, my brother now lives in Kentucky and he was able to secure this for me. When they first came out, uh, they were a little expensive, um, but he saw this one at Kroger for $80 and I just couldn't pass it up. I think even at the Stirling, they're 120 plus. So for 80 bucks, um, I think this is a good buy just for the experience of trying all the single barrels. Personally, each time I buy one, I can't tell if it's the recipe that I don't like or if it's that single barrel I don't like. Because even with us on my road, the Buffalo Traces, even if you had the exact same mash bill, it tastes drastically different. So for March Madness this year, I'm going to officially decide what is my favorite Four Roses single barrel. Uh, I think I'll break it up across three episodes. I haven't quite decided yet, but I think I'll do maybe one episode on the B, one episode on the E, and then maybe the top two from each we'll move on to the finale for the final episode. And the next bottle is another Four Roses Barrel Strength. This is the OBSO. Um, I'm excited to grab this because I think this is one of the more sought after recipes. I've heard good things about this bottle. I have, I think, roughly six or seven of them, so I'm getting pretty close. I'm missing a couple of the Ks, uh, maybe one other one. I have to go recheck it again. So everyone always goes to hunts the tier fives or sixes, but I'm telling you, uh, if you're ever in Kentucky, make sure you stop at the Fours of Distillery. They normally always have a single barrel out and the best single barrels that I've had from Four Roses are ones picked by the Mass Distiller and in their gift shop. Doesn't matter what tier it is, um, I think he saves some of his best barrels for the gift shop. If you're ever there, make sure you stop by and grab one, because um, more often than not, it is definitely worth the money. And next on this list is an E.H. Taylor single barrel. I got this at one of the Virginia Drops, and it is my second E.H. Taylor single barrel. I thought about uh, not opening it, because my first one here, I am not the biggest fan of. To me, it actually tastes worse than the E.H. Taylor small batch. However, when I went on my ski trip to Massanutten, uh, I'll put a link uh, up here on one of these areas. Um, I did a video of the bar there and I tried their E.H. Taylor single barrel and I'm telling you that bottle was amazing. Uh, it really made me reconsider and I actually did open the second bottle hoping that it tasted anything like the one at the bar. Maybe the one that I had open is just a dud. And I can say that this bottle is better than my previous, but it doesn't live up to the bottle I had at the bar. Given how the East Taylor single barrels can be hits or misses, it's gonna be hard for me opening these going forward, um, just because more often than not, I think you can trade these bottles for other ones that I enjoy more, because these East Taylor single barrels are going for around $200 and I much prefer a stag at that price point. And speaking of stag, I got two stags in this bottle haul. I got batch 22A and 23C. Now I'm really excited for this because I think these are probably two of the better batches that have come out yet. Uh, I've tried 22A and it was my favorite from uh, the year 22. I have not had 22C yet, but almost every review I've seen of it has said that this is the best one that's come out in a long time. Definitely the best of 2023, but even beyond 2023 is probably one of the best that's come out in a couple years. But regardless of the batch, Stags are always some of my favorite bourbon that is out there. I love them. It just fits my profile. If I see them for anything under 150-ish, I will probably be a buy on it. If I don't have it, they're just very good bottles. And next on this list is another Buffalo Trace product, and it is Rock Hill Farms. I got this bottle at BK Meat and Miller's up in Maryland. I'm super excited to grab this bottle. It is my first Rock Hill Farms. I haven't opened it yet and I actually have never had Rock Hill Farms before. So I'm super excited for the day I actually open this and try it. Um, figure out what type of content I'm gonna do with it. Maybe I'll do all the mash pills that this lines up with. Maybe I'll do a blind with those to see which one's the best. Um, try to think maybe what other uh, bottles is to do good in blinds. If there's anything you have an idea for with this bottle, let me know. I'm looking for a good reason to open this bottle. And next on this list is one of my favorite bottles from 2023, and it is the Four Roses LE 135th Anniversary. I was able to try this bottle at Jack Rose in DC before it was released, and I'm telling you, it was one of the best pours of the night at that bar, and there were some hitters there. Hazmat Willets 
Ace Smith Bowman cast strength, Ace Smith Bowman gingerbread, some dusty Jack was there. There was a ton, a ton of bottles, and this was one of my favorite from the night. So I got this bottle at one of the Virginia monthly drops where they pre-announced the time, place, and what bottles will be on the list. I went to my local store at midnight the night before. I gotta be honest, is it worth camping outside in the cold? Because this was in, was this January, February? I just remember being absolutely frigid. We had a little space heater to try and keep us warm. Is this worth camping on the cold for 10 hours? Probably not, um, but I am super stoked to have it and glad that it's in my collection. All right, the last bottle on this list is my first BTAC, and it is George C. Stag from 2023. Coming at 135 proof, 15 years old. I'm just, I could not describe the excitement and joy when I was able to hold this, purchase it, and bring it home. Ever since I got into whiskey, BTAC, specifically either like Georgie Stag or William the Weather, were one of the top bottles that I just really wanted to acquire. Even more than some of the Pappies. Even though the Pappies look cooler and are a little harder to get, uh, just I don't know what it is about the BTAX. I just really, really wanted one, and I am just absolutely stoked I was able to get it. So I did a review of this year's short cheese tag. I'll leave a link up in the corner. It, to me, it didn't live up to the hype of what a George C. Stag should be. Uh, past releases have been better, but still regardless, I am just overjoyed to have this on my shelf, share it with friends, family, people who see this bottle, they haven't been able to try it before. Um, as you see, I already kind of put a little bit of a dent in it, just sharing it with others so they can actually try it too. So that was my first whiskey haul of 2024. How did I do? I know there's probably too much Buffalo Trace products on it. I promise uh, there'll be other bottles in the future. But if you're enjoying this content before you head out, make sure you check out this video or this one. And until next time, cheers.